Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker and Springtime. It's here. The clover is in bloom and listen, the sound of grinder. We're gonna work on hydraulics in this video, really. We will this time, but we got a couple of little jobs gotta finish up first. So Pete has joined us. Pete is from, where are you from? Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia, and Pete has a very unique thing. He owns a lighthouse. Dimble Shoal Lighthouse. In the it's middle in of Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay. It's in the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay at the entry to Hampton Rose Harbor. It's like having a boat. A boat that doesn't move. Yeah, but it's steel, isn't it? It's, it's, it's cast iron, which is a really? very good thing, yes. How old Three, is it? It's, a, it's a hundred and so here, five years old now. You gonna live on this thing? Someday, maybe. I'd like to. It's just a hundred little jobs left to do. These are just, these are just pins that'll hold this on. These are the straps that lift the tender off the back deck. So, in between big jobs, like installing the rudder there, which we did last time, and the electronics, which will start oh, pretty soon, I guess. Trying to knock out as many small jobs as I can. So here's all the parts that are starting to pile up for the electronics. Yeah, forward scanning, sonar, radios, big radar. A lot of money wrapped up in that, but I figure it's good to be able to see in the dark. But you've got the little tiny stuff to Ooh, do. Boy, there's some heat in there, buddy. It does. It builds up, especially when it has nowhere to go. Because you're just working on that little piece. Mm -hmm. But we're doing little stuff. It's great. So where I sewed a loop into this trucker's strap is what this thing is. Pin slides through that into the other side there. And the bolt holds it in on this side so it doesn't come out. All right. I need some big bolts to hold it on. system that went to two cisterns in the basement but I look back and I go there were seagulls everywhere <laughs> and this thing's painted and this thing's painted uh, with lead paint oh come on it, that's not too bad I, okay I, I'll old drool oh, I'm gonna tell you right now when I just the inside I mean this thing has been it's a hundred years old they painted it for the first 60 years of its life with lead paint on the outside yeah. and lead paint on the inside and I went and did, did the initial walkthrough paint was peeling and chipping off of everything to the point when you walked across the floor you, you felt like you're walking across rice krispies or, or right. cornflakes right yeah and i took a, my 3500 psi pressure washer with uh with that that uh that swirl zero oh, yeah, nozzle one of those. those things are bad yeah that thing is so awesome i think that it sounds like angry hornets it's man it's slow but it cuts really good and it tore i mean it blew that that lead paint off of everything dropped to the floor. I had dikes set up in all the rooms to like catch all the water. Yeah. And let it settle. And that all the paint settle came back Just two weeks later and and uh, vacuumed it out and put it in 55 gallon drums back at the house. So that when the jackasses from the uh, environmental people or the lighthouse people sick their people on me, you just gotta show them the barrels. I'm gonna say, bring a spoon because you're gonna be eating a lot of this lead paint. <laughs> As my buddy Doug would say, get bent. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Maybe I want to make sure I've got the wrench in the right direction. Oh, are you one of those people that actually knows that? Well, the reason, like I said, we got took that. We got now. Nuclear we power had, plant we training. Had to, we had to have the training because they probably used one as a hammer. Oh, all right. All right, ready? Yeah, go. Right there. Oh, it's gorgeous. Nuclear facility approved. I went and got a few more valves. Pete works at a nuclear power plant, so he's talked me into it. a little bit more isolation valves. <laughs> and it sounds like a good idea. You know, you can always just take a hose off, put a plug in, but a valve's a lot quicker. Another beautiful, cool spring morning, and Pete even set me up with a sweatshirt here from his lighthouse, Thimble Shoals Lighthouse in Chesapeake's Bay. So, let's see, one of these will get added onto that stick of pipe. 
That valve there is a high pressure valve. It can take 3,000 PSI, but this is just a supply line, so there's hardly any pressure. So we're gonna swap it out to something more economical. This is just a common valve off the shelf at Lowe's. And when you buy ball valves, look through them to make sure they're uh, full bore. Some of them have a ball that's much smaller than the pipe itself, so you'll actually choke down the fluid as it goes through. You don't wanna do that. So buy the good stuff when you need it. Yeah, you might have to stay on one right and pull on the other. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, that's right. Anyway, you're right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're... <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, that thing is all in there, man. <laughs> Get in there. Starting to look more and more like a submarine down in there. I don't know if we said it yesterday, but Pete works in a nuclear power plant facility, so he's he's he's, he's of, used to the piping, but we have no paperwork to fill yeah. out. Yes, exactly. Isn't that fun? Most definitely. Would you like a stack of paperwork? I can hand it to you. you can do some crossword puzzles, and then put a piece of pipe in. <laughs> How can you not like fittings that tighten up with a hammer? That's a perfect tool. Okay, now we have three separate sections to the hydraulic system in here. This is the first section. This supplies the hydraulic fluid from the tank to the various pumps. So these two pumps down here take off that one right there and we can shut them off if need be. This comes down and tees. It goes back around that direction down the hose to that big pump that sits on the main engine. And if that hose leaks, well, we can shut it off too. And then one more coming this direction, turns the corner, and the VMAC will sit right here. It has a hydraulic pump on it, so it'll take its fluid from the end of that line. And if need be, we can shut that one off too. So we can have a problem on any one pump and even shut off the supply to it. The other two sections of the hydraulic system are the pressure, which is the lines going out supplying high pressure fluid to the various motors and cylinders and things, and then the return or the tank lines bringing it back from doing that work back to the tank. And like that motor over there, it'll have a pressure line going into it to do the work, and then a tank line coming back to bring that fluid back in through another filter into the tank. And Pete's up working on the first piece of that. And I'm gonna figure out this right here. This is the return from the forward end of the boat. And the thing to keep in mind is the return is not under a lot of pressure, maybe 300 PSI. So you can filter it and you can run it through Schedule 40 pipe and that kind of stuff. It's the high pressure line that'll go to almost 3000 PSI, so it needs the big fittings. And you'll see us doing this, which is a 3000 PSI fitting on a return line. You don't have to have that, but when you've got the part, that's what you use. And it uh, came as salvage. Schedule 40 is stuff you get from Lowe's and Home Depot. That's just fine for the return lines. Tuning fork. If I keep turning, it'll go. It's, that piece should tighten up too, and then we'll just go a whole another turn around. Okay. All right. To everybody out there, I know it doesn't look like much, but there's definitely three days of hard work getting all this in here, and the lines going on down. We even got the ones at the battery back there. Put some T's in there, and we ran underneath the floorboard, so we have an auxiliary connection down there. These are back in place with lots of changes to them. But here's all you really need to know. Remember the three pieces of this. It's the supply from the tank out to all the pumps. Two pumps there, one pump there, one pump down and around the corner that way. And then for the pump, there'll be a high pressure hose that comes back out. And all of our high pressure hoses run through check valves. So fluid can flow up from either of those two pumps through these check valves and into the system. But if those pumps aren't running, there's no way the fluid to go back down to any of these pumps. There's three check valves here because there's one, two, three pumps. And there's another check valve around the corner over there. See, that thing standing up there. So fluid goes down through that from the VMAC pump, which will sit in this area here, the whole machine. So everything gets supplied. That one's over there because there's a T there because the line needs to go on across and feed that motor that drives that pump over there. And the last thing we got to do is once you drive a pump, you got to return that fluid back to the tank. So there's a tank line. He's pulling out today, but I'm getting every last minute until the ride shows up. That 
is the return and so see it comes from the rear and from the front so I got to tie it into this thing down here and we're also going to put it here because this is the high pressure that's the return to tank we got to put a uh, relief valve here that when the system reaches its max pressure it'll open up and allow the fluid to go down into the uh, return to tank and it ends up going into here and it gets filtered through the Wix filter before it returns to the tank and there's Lots of fittings and short pieces of pipe all gets cut and threaded, so we got a lot of work done. And I really appreciate it. I'm going to come see you in your lighthouse. You know that, right? Most certainly. Anchor yeah. off and we'll have a great old time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a picture with both the Seeker and the lighthouse together. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. So a lot more to do on this. We'll have more videos. Until then, what you make today? Get out in your shop. Do something incredible. We want to see it. Send us the photo. Bye.